Let's do this. This is a custom of our house, and I think it's a very important custom. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us tonight. So glad you're part of our service. Those that are watching live stream and Facebook and all that good social media stuff. I told somebody today I'm probably about as anti-social media as it comes because I'm not good with that technology stuff. But uh, thank the Lord some people are. <laughs> But uh, just a few little quick announcements. Uh, don't forget, June the 6th. No, what is next month? September. Somebody help me. <laughs> September the 6th. Next Sunday night, we're having a fellowship get-together. Uh, bring one. Or help me, somebody. Each one can reach one. Amen. <laughs> Hey, this is, this is a very important thing. I believe we're really trying to connect people. How I many know during the COVID, it's hard to feel connected? Hey, Amen. It's hard to feel connected. So we're trying to come together. There's going to be food. There's going to be games. There's going to be, uh, what else? Food. How many like food? Hey, Amen. Just show up for the food. Now, I'm going to say this. You, you got to catch this. Hold on just a minute, bro. I want them to catch this. You got to catch this. The one that brings the most visitors get a $50 gift card come on now if y'all don't need no money you just bring the boast and give it to me yeah y'all didn't want to go with that either though but those who bring the most visitors on that Sunday night will receive a $50 gift card amen so keep that in mind as you're inviting people how many's got how many's got some friends you're going to invite now it's okay <laughs> Hopefully you are going to invite them to start with, but now it's really a good incentive, amen. So don't forget that. Uh, so uh, let's do that, amen. It's important. How many know we have to, as the body, reach for those that are lost, amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, one other announcement. I got one more. I was one I was going to ask. Sister Buffy, y'all still doing the September the 20th? Night of worship at 6 o'clock here. Amen. So don't forget that. This is September. The first part of September starts, so I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. But September the 20th also, since he... Oh, Trisha Arwood's going to be here that night. Y'all don't want to hear her, do you? <laughs> yeah, she's great. Uh, that's good. That's good to give her a hand. Amen. Let's, uh, let's remember that. Also, that Sunday morning, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm trying to look around, Pastor Appreciation is also going to be September the 20th. He's not here so we usually take up a love offering to him, him and Sister Norma. So please be praying about what the Lord lay on your heart to give him. How many know and understand that pastoring is a 24, it's a full-time job? Amen. That's right. We, and we got a great pastor. How many know that? Amen. And, I, and, and we say this recently because it is a different thing. But I want us to understand something. It's hard to pastor sometimes anyway, but it's really been hard this year. This COVID thing has really shifted us out in the parking lot twice. We've been in, we've been out. We, we're trying to keep things going and keep things safe. And there's been a lot of, uh, a, a lot of unusual pressure upon ministers and leaders. So remember Pastor Appreciation, September the 20th, that morning service, and then September the 20th, that night will be our night of, am I saying it right? Is it the night of worship? Is that what you're calling it? Okay. The night of worship. You know, they did not invite me to sing. I just thought about that. Who said amen? <laughs> I'm taking names. Somebody record that. I'm just kidding. Oh, she's going to come over. I thought she was going to say something. But anyway. All right. Sister Madison's got an announcement. Amen. Um, on behalf of God's men and girls, we would like to thank who all has helped and came out to be a part of us. So thank you all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I say this at 14? You'd have never got me up here. Y'all may have been up here, but not me. Amen. Sheriff, how many you got? You got none? Zero, goose egg. Somebody help Sheriff out. I don't know that he's not ever had at least a couple. <laughs> Do a, that's pitiful, Buffy says it's pitiful. <laughs> Somebody help him out. If you got a KJ dollar, help the man out. I don't think I got one or I would. He had 75 this morning. Can we give the Lord a praise for his, for his giving or for people's giving? All right, if you'll stand with me. 
as my mind has done me lately, I forgot to get somebody to read scripture, and uh, Buffy's going to find one real quick, <laughs> and then we're going to pray. <laughs> uh, hey, y'all don't understand how much I put people on the spot. <laughs> uh, those guys I call up for offering a lot of times don't have a clue until I just see them and call them up. But as she's getting ready, let's remember our pastor and them. They're on their trip and uh, be praying for them that they have a great time of refreshing and renewing. And, and can I say this about our pastor? Even when he's on the trip, he's thinking about here. He called me yesterday and was talking about ideas. The Lord was he's, Lord gives him a time to get his mind. The Lord was already, already giving him new stuff. So let's let's remember them. Amen. You got something, sister? Go ahead. Be instant. Ooh, be instant in season and out of season. Is that it? Is that it? You, no, that's not what I have. But oh, I was just, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, um, I had kind of quoted this this morning during praise and worship, but I was telling Pastor Philip and even Brian, when I had, and I didn't quote it word for word, but when I had quoted it this morning, I really, I felt, I felt it when I, I felt like there was a shift in the atmosphere when I was quoting that scripture. So I want to read it again. It's Revelation 1, 8. It says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody give him a praise. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to pray, and then you can be seated for a moment. We've got a few little things we're going to get out of the way. And uh, then we'll jump right into our service. So let's pray. Let's invite God into the house. How many wants God in here? Amen. So let's invite him into the house. Father, we ask you, God, right now, God, to begin to move in this service, God. God, we're asking you, God, to begin to do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in this place, God. We're asking you, God, to save the lost, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, strengthen, and encourage in this place tonight, Father God. Lord, we're asking you to inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. Your word said where two or three are gathered in your name, you'd show up in the midst, Father God. And we're asking you to fulfill your word tonight, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you to anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint uh, Brother Brian as he gets ready to bring forth the word, God. Anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work, God. Lord, we ask you, God, to move right now like never before in this house. Move like never before upon your people. Move like never before upon this city and upon this town. Move like never. Lord, break out in a mighty and powerful way in this house tonight, God. We're calling upon you to move, God. We're calling upon you to come down and open the door for the prisoners who are bound. Set the captive free tonight, Lord. Heal those of infirmities and sicknesses and diseases, God. Push back the darkness right now, Father. Father God, out of men and women's lives today. And Lord, we ask it right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Just real quick, uh, uh, kind of brief. We're going to, it's our month in, and we usually do our month in numbers about uh, people that's been ministered to here on this campus, if you will. And we, uh, just to go through them, and hey, how many know it's important for each service that we're talking about tonight? The early service had a total of 438 for last month. Can we give the Lord a praise? Amen. Now, you got to understand, some of these figures are, are offset because we were in the parking lot for how long? Three or four weeks? Probably. Something like that. So they're, they're, they're not as, as powerful as we, as, they, as we usually have them. But in the sanctuary alone, we had over 2,062 people ministered to in this sanctuary. Amen. Now, this class right here will take all the volunteers they can get. It's the three to five class, three to five-year-old class. They had a total of 23. Can we give them a praise? Amen. Children's Church had a total of 41. Amen. Nursery had a total of three. That's okay. We, we got our nursery hasn't been open for a little bit anyway, but that, these are just numbers here. The Hispanic church has had a total of 267. Can we give the Lord a praise? Now, I want to I want to stress to you, we haven't had Sunday school in a few weeks off and on. I think we've had it two weeks maybe now, and the first week I don't think people knew we were having it. But the, let me say this about Sunday school. If you ain't got a class, you need to find one. It's that simple. 
You need to get into where the Word's being taught. You need to find a place. How many know you, you cannot get enough of the Word of God in your life? How many know in this time you better have the Word of God rooted down on the inside of you? Come on now. Now, I ain't, I ain't no gloom and doom preacher, but you got to understand things are unveiling right before our very eyes about how they're treating the church. It may be a day where you ain't going to be able to buy a Bible like you used to. Come on, you better have the Word hid down in your heart. So come to Sunday school. The total of Sunday school was 200. Can we give all our Sunday school teachers a hand? The final total of all people ministered to here on this campus through this place was 3,034 for last month. Can we give the Lord a good praise? Amen. Amen. If you'll stand with me. As you're standing real quick, don't forget, you can still get CDs and DVDs from, from the camp meeting back in August. So if you got any questions, see Sister Melissa. She'll hook you up with those. Now, here's the ultimate question tonight. How many really has come to worship God? How many's come to worship Jesus Christ? This is the reason we showed up. It's the reason we got dressed. It's the reason we got in the car. It's the reason we come is to worship Jesus. Amen? Now, I'm going to challenge you, and I like to challenge people anymore because I think sometimes if we're not careful, we just come in and we go through the motions. We come Sunday morning, God, my, my goodness, God showed up in this place this morning. Amen. If you missed this morning, you, you missed it. You just missed it. That's all I can say. <laughs> you can go back and watch it, but it's a whole lot different than being in here. It's a whole lot different when the atmosphere is moving. How, how many know that? How, how many, I'm trying to hush, but I think some people need to understand this. It's like fishing. You can watch fishing on TV all you want, but it ain't the same as being out in the boat and having one on the end of your rod. How many understand know that? Come on now. It's, it's totally different. You women folk that like to shop, you can watch all the sales you want on TV, but they ain't the same when you go down there and you find that $3 shirt that was worth 40 bucks and you get to bring it home. Come on now, it's a difference. It's all right. I understand. So there's a difference in being into the house of God when the spirit begins to move, amen? And I won't challenge you tonight, and I say it all the time, and I think sometimes we almost get into a redundant step. But here's the thing is, if you've come to worship Jesus Christ, your King, your Savior, and your Redeemer, I don't only want your neighbor standing beside of you to hear you, not only the people in Jefferson City to hear you, but you need to let the devil know who's your king. You need to let the devil know who's your God. You need to let the devil know who you put your faith and your trust in. Praise him just a little bit tonight. Praise him. Give him your best praise. Magnify him with everything you got. Hey, they're around the throne room tonight crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We might as well cry it down here. Woo! We live hands in the sanctuary lift up our hands in the sanctuary bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord oh we lift up our hands in the sanctuary lift up our hands in the sanctuary bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord Sing it again.
them amen and things ain't going to change until you're willing to step out in faith amen and listen the flesh and the spirit are going to war all the time but you got to let the spirit overcome the flesh the flesh isn't going to want to witness the flesh isn't going to want to share Jesus right well it's just easier if I'm quiet it's just easier if I sit back yeah it's going to be a lot easier but if, hey, listen, if you'll say, God, help me, Lord, be with me, help me move, God, give me the words to speak, step out in boldness, it'll get easier to share your faith as you do it, amen? All right, give the Lord one more praise, amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Now, who's ready to give? Who's ready to see hope go forward? Who's ready to step out in faith tonight and continue to give to God, to love people, to keep the doors open and the lights on? It's a sad thing a lot of people don't even get to have church right now or can't afford to have church through this pandemic. Everything that's going on, you know, it's hard for them to keep the doors open. People have been out of work and financial strains, but God will continue to bless you. Amen? And you know, we talked about it this morning. I hit on it this morning. It, it takes something like money, the root of all evil, and let's use it for love. Let's love with our money. Amen? Let's use it for God to further his kingdom. It's a great thing to have church on Sunday night. Amen? We got. We live in a world, yeah, we live in a world where church is becoming less, right, and, and being out in the world's more. I don't think one church service a week is near enough, amen? Three almost ain't enough, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, because we're battling the devil and fighting the world now, and it's getting worse, and we can see it out there. You can see those end times and what the Bible talks about, and even more now. It talks about in the Bible, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves, especially in those final and last days. What are they doing? Forsaking the gathering of themselves. You know, let's get together, sing a song, have church, have a message, go home. I'll see you in a week. It's hard enough to come in Monday, Tuesday, come in Wednesday, fill back up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and come in back Sunday. We need him now more than ever, amen? We've got to keep the doors open, lights on, water flowing, a place of hope and refuge they can come in and hear and see the gospel, amen? Some people need to see tangible proof. Come in here and see it, amen? God's alive and he's moving and he's going to do something awesome. Do not miss it, amen? 
All right, so up front, we've got we got tithe plates up here you guys can give up front. We got, we got any in the back back there tonight? I don't see any tonight. Just in the front tonight, all right? And then we also got our kiosk. You can text. I like doing that. I just get on there, put it in where I want it to go. Send, done, right? Get on there, online, mail it in, kiosk back there in the left-hand corner. If you got a card, you can use your card. But let's pray over this offering and ask God to do his will. Right? We want to take something people get wrapped up like money. Money can be such a horrible thing, right? And we get so wrapped up and consumed by it. But if we'll love with it and ask God to do his will with it, because it's all his anyway, he blesses us with it. Say, God, multiply it, bless it, do something amazing with it. Amen. Ain't none of us walking around in a thousand dollar suit and fly, fly no helicopter in tonight. Amen. We're all just country folk that love Jesus, right? Lucky to have a car, an old pickup truck. So you know it ain't padding nobody's pockets around here. We're going to use it to love on people. Amen. Let's ask God to do His will with our money at Mount Vale. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, God, we ask you to bless this offering. God, we lift it up to you. God, hear our prayer tonight, Lord. As we raise it up to you, Father, multiply this offering. God, help us, Jesus, to always be in a right mind, a right heart toward giving, Father, to you, Jesus, because it takes money. Yes, for our outreach, God, to keep this building going and lights on, God, and to reach the lost. It, it takes money. God, help us, Lord, to have a right heart and a right mindset when it comes to our money, Father. And we give it to you right now, God. Bless those, God, everyone that gives, bless their finances, God, bless their lives, touch them, God, with abundant blessings, Father, as we use this to further your kingdom and nothing else, God, but to pour into your people with this money, everything for you, Jesus, to glorify you, Father, right now, bless it, take it, God, and do your will, Father, above all things, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Best for you, we pour out our best for you. Oh yeah, we pour out our best for you. 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 We pour out our best for
your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his presence go before you and behind
coming to my spirit is they're around the throne room right now they're around the throne room right now with lifted hands exalting him day and night they even say the angels in heaven are around the throne room exalting him but you know one thing the angels can't sing a song that we can sing come on now you see what you're talking about the angels don't know what it means to be redeemed the angels don't know what it means to be saved and if we who are the redeemed the bible said let the redeemed say so Woo! i, I feel something here let the redeemed say so it's, it's, it's from your voice. It's from your clap. It's from your shout. I want you to just for the next five seconds begin to let the redeemed say so. Let the redeemed give out a praise. Let the redeemed extol their God. Let the redeemed shout hallelujah. Let the redeemed lift up holy hands. Let the redeemed give a clap offer and a shout for victory. Those who have been blood bought, blood washed by the Savior's blood, let us shout unto the Lord tonight. My, 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 my. Because he's for you and he ain't against you. I like that song. He's in front of me, he's behind me, he's all around me. It took me back to the scriptures that said I was the head and not the tail. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, I'm the head and not the tail. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, I'm a child of the king. I don't care what the world tells you. It may tell you you ain't worth nothing. It may You may feel like you're at the bottom of the rung. But I got news for you. If your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're more worth than anything this world has to offer. You're the head and not the tail. You're blessed coming and blessed going. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. 
Woo! I feel him in this house tonight. My, my, my. Woo! So Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thought about those that were singing around the throne room. And this is, you can't find this in Scripture in a sense. But the Bible does say that the Lord will inhabit the praises of his people. Now this is just my imagination because I got a, a, a vivid one. But I could almost see the angels and those around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy. And when we here at Mount Vale begin to lift up our voices, I could, I could almost see the Lord saying, wait a minute, I want to listen to this. Wait a minute, I want to go down here and listen to this because we know what it means to be redeemed. We know what it means to be snatched out of the flames of hell and on our way to heaven. We know what it means to have the, the prison door open and the chains broke off of us. We know what it means to have every addiction that had us bound destroyed right before our very eyes. Woo, I, I'm going to have to hush because Brian, I know, has got a message. <laughs> but I feel him in this place. So without further ado, let's make Brother Brian Williams welcome as he comes and brings forth the word tonight. Hallelujah. Well, don't stop praising him right now. He just quoted the scripture that he inhabits the praises of his people, right? So as long as we're praising him, he walks through that door. You know what happens? Things begin to happen. The, the miracles begin to happen. Chains begin to fall off, right? I just said he inhabits the praises. That's you praising, amen? Let's worship God. Hey, you may not have something going on in your life that needs healing or miracles right now, but somebody next to you might. Let's praise Him. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for being in this church. We thank you for being in this house tonight because there may be somebody here that needs you to move in their behalf, dear God. Mighty God, we thank you. It's such an honor. I love this church. I love the church people. I just now started... Uh, going around hugging people. I asked uh, Miss Sharon this morning if I could hug her because it's been forever since I've been able to hug her. And she, she let me, so that was, that was the highlight of my morning. Because everybody's scared to death to touch and hug and love one another. And, and that's all I want to do. During this thing, that's all I want to do is just show the love of Jesus Christ. Just wrap my arms around somebody that's in need right now, somebody that's, that's a little nervous or somebody that's a little scared and say, you know what? Jesus Christ loves you. There may be a whole lot of junk going on in the world right now, but inside this building, inside here, inside this temple, there's a whole lot more going on in here than there is out there. Amen? Yes. I tell you what. The power of God is in this building. The power of God is in this building. Amen. If you can't feel him, something's wrong. The Bible says to check yourself. You better check. You better make sure you ain't dead. When the power of God comes into a room like this, into a service, and, and shows up and shows out, it's such an amazing thing. God is so good. Hey, I'm preaching. Let me preach. I've got to use a, uh, a notebook. Um, if anybody knows me, when I try to work on electronics, it never goes good. Now, I can build some of the biggest and nicest houses that the Lord would allow me and people's pocketbooks will allow me. But when it comes to electronics, it's no good. And I tried to fix my iPad and so now I have, I'm, I'm old schooling. Amen, I'm old schooling. I've even got my Bible up here. Y'all don't see that a whole lot. Of course, next time you may not see my Bible. It may be my iPad. <laughs> but I do have my phone because this was the, the only thing I could put my scriptures on. If it'll, if it'll work. But I'm not going to keep you. If you know me, when I stand up here, I, uh, I don't fool around. I, you know, when God's done with me, I'm done. It may be 10 minutes. It may be 30 minutes. But... You know what? We're just going to praise God for his word. Amen. I won't keep you long. I promise you'll be at Gondolier way before they close. 
as I was praying that the pastor come up to me during our practice a week or so ago and and he asked me um, you know and I just want to tell you this because it means a lot to me that our pastor would would have enough faith in me and trust in me to stand at his pulpit we used to go to a church uh, for ten and a half years we sat at this church and we loved our pastor and we devoted our life to them and and he taught me a lot of things uh, you know trying to learn how to be a minister t trying to learn how to preach memorizing the word doing this and that but I never I never had the opportunities I have here our pastor isn't a jealous man he don't care to have people come up and preach and, and, and learn because that's what the church is about. The church is about discipleship, teaching you how to go and teach others about the Word of God. Amen? And that's what I, and I'm so humbled to be in this position right now because you, there's a lot of places they won't let you do this. A lot of, a lot of pastors are big headed. It's like they're the guy, they're the king, they're the, the man of the house. And it's important for a pastor. You know to be head of the church but you have to disciple people and our pastor allows me to do that and I, I guess he's uh, watching on Facebook if I was on vacation I wouldn't be watching on Facebook but he loves his church amen he, he may get on to me for that but that's all right I want to talk to you today um, I was uh, studying this uh, and I started reading because um, I didn't have anything at the moment. I started praying and I started, you know, just trusting the Lord that he would give me a message. So I just started reading and I'd already been reading that week. And uh, I was reading in 2 Samuel and uh, I read back over these scriptures again and something jumped out at me. And that's how he does it. That's how the Lord speaks to you. Something jumped out at me and, and I want to read it. And this is in 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 7. Okay, and just bear with me. He says, Now it come to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, He says, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in tents. Okay, so he's sitting there, and I imagine, I, I imagine he's sitting back on a lazy boy, because I would, watching NCAA college football. This is David, by the way. Maybe watching some Andy Griffith, right? I don't know. You know, but he's chilling. I mean, it says right here, he says that the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies. The Lord just bought, now if you, if you have read this before, you know, you would know that, that David just got done just going through and, and the Lord was with him and beating all these people and, and uh, you know, he, he was becoming victorious about all these battles and stuff like this. And then, and then he decides he's going to bring the, bring the ark to the temple or, 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 or to the city of David. And everybody knows this story that, you know, uh, they put it on a cart and they're, they're pushing it down the, the bumpy gravel road. And, reaches the threshold and it starts to tip over and Uzzah reaches over to grab the to keep it from falling and he drops dead everybody knows that story right David got upset David got upset and he says uh, you know he says how in the world am I supposed to bring that to the city of David he just killed somebody if they'd have been doing that the first time nobody would have died it wasn't supposed to be on a cart it was supposed to be carrying it right but he was but he was in basically the rest of God he, he he was sitting there chilling out he was relaxing because there was no battles at that time God had delivered his enemies to him and everything and he says see now I dwell in a house of cedar but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains and Nathan says this, he says to the king, he says, Go do all that is in your heart, David, for the Lord is with you. Now listen to what God said. He says, But it happened that night. The word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Now listen to this. He says, 
would you build a house for me to dwell in? That's what he's asking David. How are you going to build me a house? Think about that. We're talking about a mighty God. And David's wanting to build him a place to dwell. Wanting to build him a place to live, right? Thus says the Lord, you, would, you, would you build a house for me to dwell in? He says, for I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this very day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, he says, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house? And I want to speak to you very briefly. The message, the title of this message is Nothing Behind the Curtains. Amen. Nothing Behind the Curtains. Father, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you that our speech, our teaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom. It is not my wisdom, Lord. It is not my knowledge that stands to teach, Lord, but it is the demonstration of your spirit and your power, dear God. We ask that this word would go forth anointed, dear God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of the people, that they have a receiving spirit and an understanding spirit of what you're trying to deliver today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity because some people in this world don't get to do what we get to do. Don't have the freedom to come before you and worship you and tell you thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. God, we ask that you would just help us to understand what it means, dear God, what you're trying to tell us today. Lord, and if there be anybody that needs to meet you today, dear God, we ask that you would just tug and pull on their heart in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. You may be seated. And I promise I won't keep you long. I just want, I, as I'm reading this, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm like, you know, and, and David... You know, David's sitting in his house, and, uh, you know, and he's, 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 he's chilling. The Lord's uh, blessed him and his household, and, uh, you know, he's sitting there, and, and, and you got to remember, you know, he finally starts here, and, you know, he didn't want to bring the Ark of the Covenant, the city of... We're going to have to get on the sound, man, about this microphone. So he's, he, you know, he, he's sitting there and he's relaxing and the Lord has delivered him and all this stuff. And, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was in, uh, I, I think it's Obed Edom's house. Is that how you pronounce it? And David hears the rumor that his household is being blessed hand over fist. The Ark of the God, God, the presence of God is in his house. So, of course, it's being blessed. This whole time that he's been with Israel, you know, they've been blessed. Over and over and over and over, they've been blessed, right? So David hears about it, and so he, he you know, David starts to bring the uh, Ark of the Covenant in. They do it the, the, the right way this time. They're, they're carrying it. They go six feet. They give worship and praise, and David goes in, and, and uh, you know, he, he starts worshiping. He's breaking bread and blessing the whole, I mean, the whole city, and he goes in and blesses his, his household and everything like that. He sets the Ark up in the, in the tent. And goes in his house and he's just chilling. And then he's sitting there and he's going, "Wait a minute." He's like, "I'm sitting in a house of cedar. I'm 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 living it up. I'm living the dream." And we got God, the power and the presence of God, sitting out in the tent. And I know it's a tabernacle in in in, in the Old Testament. It it was built for that purpose. But I I, I want to go somewhere with this. He says, I think we need to get God out of the tent and put him in a house. Giving God, listen, a lot of times we're trying to give God stuff God didn't ask for. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm saying? David was trying to give God a house to live in, but he, say, he told David, he says, have I ever asked for that? Have I ever stopped in any of the people, the children of Israel, any of the tribes, any of the leaders, the shepherds, have I looked at him and said, hey, you know what? I think you need to build me a place to stay. No, he wants to be moving. He wants to be in the middle of the children. He wants to be there to help them in their time of need, right? A lot of times we give God stuff that, uh, that, that, that he's not asking for. You know, he asks for humility. He asks for obedience. 
you know, and a lot of times we come in here with our gifts and our talents and, and stuff like that, or, and, and we act like we're really giving God something. Well, God give you that gift and talent, right? What are we giving? We, we act like if we take up special offerings or stuff like that, that and, and, and I'm not knocking it because I've done it. You know, we, we act like we give big or something like that, and it was his to begin with, right? Amen. Amen. I mean, it was his, anything you get. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, right? It comes from the Father. I mean, it says God was happy moving around with the Israelites. He wasn't looking for a permanent place to stay. Now listen, it was David's desire to give God a permanent dwelling place. The problem with that is people start to identify the presence of God to one place as if God were confined to that one location. You see where I'm going? I'm not, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, we try to put God in a box. Turn this mic down. Turn this mic down. We try to put God in a box all the time and say that he's this little bitty old thing that, we, that, that only comes out when we need him. When we're in time, we're, we're in trouble or we're being chastened or something like that, we, we don't need God. We got God in our little pocket right here, and he's like a little calculator that we only pull out when we want to add something up. I, I mean, I know I'm not going to get no help. It's okay. It's okay. You know, we keep trying to give him too much that he's not asking for. He wants worship. He wants praise. He wants, he wants to say that, that my people... Love me for what I'm doing. That's what he's wanting. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to cry out and witness to other people about the things that he's done for us. He don't need buildings. He don't need, he don't need the money. He don't need uh, the, the beautiful songs and, 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 and the beautiful chairs and the carpet and the, the, the big old pulpits. You know, he, he's not looking for this stuff. He's looking for an obedient heart that he can fulfill, that he can feel, that he can inhabit. Amen. David's desire. David had a good idea. I mean, he's sitting there and he's like, "Ah, I forgot all about God back there in the backyard." How many's done that? How, listen, li- listen. There's been times where I've been up here. And forgot all about God. Because we only need him when we're down there, right? Y'all ain't listening. We only need him when, he's down, when we're down there, right? When stuff's going on in our life, we're like, God, where are you? Oh, my God, I need your help. We forget about that he's sitting right there. He's been there the whole time. He's been chilling with us the whole time. He's the reason you got to the point you're in. Brother, it, you may feel like it's a bad time. Or you may feel like you're going through something that's a little rocky road or rough. But he's been walking with you the whole time. He ain't, the Bible says he never leaves you or forsakes you. I mean, that's, that's just me. Listen to this. And a lot of times in Galatians 4, 9, and 10. Is that, a, is that one there? I don't know if I gave him any of these scriptures. I'll read it. Listen to this. Oh, I missed one. That's why she skipped it. I want to read this one. I'm I'm going to go back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have 18 pages worth of notes. And Pastor Philip, he's got that beautiful iPad. Brother, you should have let me use that thing. That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to step back. Listen to what. Listen. You you know the Lord didn't allow David to build the temple? Y'all know that? But he promised him that he was going to let his heir build it. So Solomon builds the temple. Now, does anybody know how big the temple was? Pastor Philip, you don't know how big the temple was? Come on. Okay. Yay big. Okay, it was, it was 30 feet wide. Probably a little bit wider than that row right there. 90 feet long. And it was 45 feet high. So that was a bunch of double wide trailers stacked together. Okay. That's what Solomon built. That was, that was the temple that they built for our God. Listen to what he says, though. He says, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? He said, behold, heaven and 
heaven and the heavens of the heavens cannot contain you. He says, he says this about what he just built for the Lord. He says, how much less this temple which I have built. So he's basically understanding that the great big God is not going to fit in this little temple I just built. Now, you're talking about 45 feet high. That's, that curtain is 16 feet, so three times that high. But it's not going to contain the power of God. Now, you understand? I think they call it she, she, Shekinah glory. They allow, that's God's portion that he allowed to be put into the ark. Solomon's like, this is not going to hold him. That this, this is the God of the universe, people. It says this in, in, uh, in Acts. Listen to this. This is a lot to read, and I'll try to read it. It says, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make in according to the patterns that he had seen, which our fathers have received and in turn also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. Now listen to this. It says, our fault. Mm, don't listen to that because that's twice. But Solomon built him a house. However, the mighty, the most high, does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all things? Now we're trying to put him in this little box. Now I understand in the Old Testament this was, this was how it was supposed to be, right? This, this, is, this was their custom. But the whole time, it reads the whole time he was in their presence. He didn't want to be left in a temple back, back in, in, in the city of David while everybody was fighting. He wanted to go along with them because he knew that in their time of need, he was going to have to show up and show out. Right? Listen to this. It says Galatians. I was reading this. I'm sorry I had to back up. Galatians 4, 9 and 10. It says this. It says, but now after you have known God or rather you are known by God, how is it that you turn Again, to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage. You observe days, months, and seasons, and years. Listen, there's no longer a need for a temple, folks. There's no longer a need for the temple. Solomon realized this. No earthly dwelling could or would contain God. A lot of times, listen. And I'm, I'm fixing to get to the end of this. Too many times... We act like God can only move in one particular spot or one particular day or one particular revival. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We put God in such a box, we're like, he can't move in just any old time or any old place, but he can. A lot of times we wait for that, per that, that, that anointed person to come into the house of God because we have such uh, high hopes about what they're going to preach and what they're going to say. Or that one song that's being sung, we want to make sure that, that that's, that's the song that they're singing because that's when God moves. That's the only time God moves is when, when the moment is perfect. Amen? And that's what Paul is speaking to the Galatians. He says, he says, you know God. You've seen his miracles. You know how great he is. You no longer have to keep him in a box. He says, but you go back to being bondage because you think you have to observe days, months, times, or years. You're going you're gonna to understand what I'm saying. When I get to the end of this, we have got to stop putting God in a box. He doesn't just move in the church house, folks. Revival starts on the outside, in here, out there. That's okay. Y'all don't have to help me. I'll do it myself. Listen to this. It says, God no longer dwells behind the curtain. Do you understand that? God no longer dwells behind the curtain. Nothing behind the curtain. I guarantee you, if you go look, there ain't nothing there. The veil the was tore. Amen? You ain't listening. The veil was tore. You don't need no high priest going for you. You can do it. 
Listen to what he says in, in Hebrews 10, 19 and 25. He says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He says, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh, Jesus Christ's flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, listen to this, folks. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, the pastor was talking about holding fast this morning. He says, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Are you listening? I lost my place. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without waiting for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking, he just said it, not forsaking the assembling together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. It seems like every service, every service, these pastors and preachers are telling you, guess what? We're in the last days. We are in the last days. And the Bible is saying, forsake not the assembling together as a man. It doesn't say you have to observe a certain day. It doesn't say you have to be in this building. We got to quit containing God in that church house. He don't care about this stuff. He, he loves the church, but listen to what I'm saying. He don't care about the materialistic stuff. He don't care about the great big screen. He don't care about the nice lights, the PowerPoint. He don't care about the carpet and stuff like that. that. That's things that he gave you. What he cares about is the fact that, guess what? Now you can come to his throne. Now he has opened access to you to come to him with any need or circumstance in your life and worship and praise him and give power to go out and tell people what Jesus Christ is all about. That's what we need to be doing. It ain't about the, it, he's no longer, he's no longer, he don't need the temple. There's nothing behind the curtains, folks. Guess what the Bible says? This is the temple of God. This. He walked out of that. He got out from behind the curtain when he hung Jesus Christ on the cross and says, guess what? Now, my dwelling place is no longer the temple. It's you. It's your body. It's your heart. It's your spirit. It's your soul. And, and when I get in there, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that the power of God comes on you for you to be witnesses. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm almost through. We got to understand that the Lord has given us this power. Th let me tell you what the church is for. The church is, like I said, is for discipling. It's discipleship for teaching. We come together in this type of atmosphere to strengthen us and encourage us and basically to recharge us to do what? To go out and get them. Listen, folks. The sinners of the world didn't see God moving here. They didn't see it. They didn't see how great God moved in our praise and worship. Charlie speaking and the pastor speaking, they didn't see the anointing and, the, and just the presence of the Holy One of Israel coming into this building. They didn't see it. The only way they are going to see it is how. We take the access that we have to the throne of God and we take it out that door and we reach the lost. I'm just saying. Let's stand. Let's stand. I told you we're going to get to the gondolier. If Brady will come and play some music. Now I want you guys to I, and I understand that, that during this time we have uh, the world's changed, folks. The world's changed, but God said he never leaves us or forsakes us. I'm, I, I don't care what's going on. It, and I don't want to take away from the people that are being careful. Be careful. Be careful. I, I want you to feel comfortable where you're at. But I haven't been, I haven't been afraid of it. I'm not saying that it's not something out there that that's, that's, uh, people have died. People have gone on and went to heaven because of this coronavirus, this, this whatever it's called, COVID-19. Is that what it's called? I, 
Listen, I don't know anything about it because I don't get on stole. I, I refuse to let. Listen, I'd rather hear what God's saying than what the television says. We spend too much time on Facebook, Twitter, and all that other stuff listening to all the, the, the jargon that the, the earth is telling us. And our hope lies in here. Our hope lies in here. Our hope lies in this. This right here. Faith come by hearing, hearing by what? This. Do you understand that? The Word of God. That's where our faith comes from. Faith, faith for what? Faith that God is going to keep us safe and protect us. We no longer have to look through the veil. He's come out. The veil has been torn. He has entered into our hearts and our minds and our spirits. And he says, I've empowered you to go out and teach and to reach the lost. We, should, we would call ourselves, we're selfish. We are selfish if we do not go out and reach the lost. We should be excited. I've had people come, I've, I've had, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but I've had people talk about their church, come to me and build their church up. Oh my God, it's the greatest church in the world. The, the walls are painted. We got the top-notch cameras. We got the, the things on the walls and the ceiling looks so good. And we got, we, we got the latest technology in all the world. And you should come and see how much money we can raise. But I never hear about the power of God in the church. Never hear about God moving. Never hear about somebody just getting saved. Heaven forbid we should talk about people getting saved. That should be your number one goal. How many people are you reaching? He's no longer behind the curtain. He's in, he's right here. We're selfish not to take it out into the world because they're not going to know about it. You, every single day, every single day you should reach. That should be your number one goal. That should be your highest number, not how much you get paid, how many you've brought to the Lord. How many you've sat down and prayed with and let them know that Jesus Christ has got everything in their life in the palm of his hands. Amen. He's such a great big God for us to keep to ourselves. Pastor, right? He is a great big God. We come in here and we spit and sputter and sing and praise and worship and we, we leave the building and nothing else is said about Jesus Christ. Man, I've, I've even seen people. I remember uh, back in the day, uh, some of us will know who I'm talking about. But man, you talk about a move of the Holy Ghost in our church services at that time, back in the day. I'm talking about the power of God. People crippled and stand up. They can't walk in wheelchairs. Cancer drying up. I'm talking about miracles. They were in the atmosphere of God. They would walk out of the service and the devil would get a hold of them. And it was like, what in the world? We got to take it past the threshold of the church, folks. We can't contain God in the building. He can't fit. This, this, this building is 80 foot wide, 70 foot, 70 something, 70 to 80 feet wide, 80 feet long. And it can't hold our God. Somebody better praise him right there. He, he, this building can't hold God. It can't hold the, the, the magnificent things that he can do. But we got to let people know, amen. What I, want, what, what I want to pray tonight is if you don't know God like that, listen, if you don't have that, that relationship, if there's anybody, I don't know if there's anybody in here that doesn't know God like, like I'm talking about, we want to give you this opportunity to come. Come before the throne of God, because guess what? You you have a high, you have a different type of high priest. His name is Jesus Christ, and he says, You're able to come now. Come and get me. Come and get me. You don't need you don't need no no ad, you don't need somebody, no advocate to speak for you. I died on the cross to give you access to the very throne of God. Just come. If you don't know him, please come. Get to know him tonight. Find out who Jesus Christ really is. He loves you so much. There's nothing that he doesn't care about in your life. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to just, just, just fill you full of his power and his love. He no, he's, he's no longer behind the veil, folks. 
listen, I, I, if you need more of God, I want you to come. If you, and then it should be everybody in this room. If you need more of God, if you want to be someone that can take what goes on in here, out there. Now, now if you don't want to be around anybody, that's fine. You don't have to come up here. But God's trying to move and God's trying to speak. He's saying, you know what? He says, you are now the temple of the living God. Everything, all that power, all that authority that they kept in that box, that Shekinah glory is now imparted into our lives. And we're allowed to take that out into the world and reach the lost. We should not hang on to it. We should not. Uh, he, say, he says, are you going to hide it under a bush? No. Did you want to shine your light into the world? Amen. Let your light show so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight, dear God, for all that you do. We magnify you. Lord, we pray right now that you would just anoint us and touch us, dear God. Lord, fill our hearts, dear God. Fill our souls with your power and your spirit and your presence, dear God. There are so many in this world, dear God, that don't know who you are or once have known you, dear God, and have turned away from you that we got to go out and get, dear God. We talk about the church growing. We talk about the, the church producing and stuff like that. But, God, if we, we don't take you out into the world, they're never going to know you, dear God. Give us boldness. Give us boldness to speak, Lord God. Some of us, Lord, are scared to speak to somebody. Some of us don't have that ability or can't articulate words and stuff like that. Lord, I pray that you would give us the words to say in that very moment, dear God. Bless us with the words to say. I pray over everybody here, dear God. Lord, that they become winners of souls, fishers of men, dear God. That you bless them. You bless them with your word. And that the more they get into your word, the more they read, the more they memorize, the more they pray, dear God, that they begin to get built up. They begin to have more joy, more peace, more understanding of you, dear God, where they can go out into the world and reach the lost, dear God. You are no longer contained into one space. Lord, don't let us be trapped in bondage again, dear God. We don't have to observe certain days or months or times of years. We don't have to wait on certain people to show up. We don't have to wait for the, the tides to be right, dear God. You will move in every situation at that very moment, dear God. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. God, I thank you, Lord God, for this message. I thank you for your word, dear God. I thank you you're no longer contained, dear God, that you live in me, that my body is the temple of the living God. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Before you,
trying to tell us something. Tonight the message, nothing behind the curtain. This morning the pastor preached it's time to quit acting like we are in church. It's time to really honestly get down to business with God and really truly honestly serve Him with your whole heart. I think God is trying to tell us something. Just think about it. At the beginning of this year, we never would have thought that this world, this uh, year would be like it is. You know, the Bible tells us and teaches us that if he, he will take everything from us to get us our attention. Look, he took your football. He took your basketball, your baseball. He took your concerts. You couldn't go to the movies. You couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do nothing. You had. You didn't have no choice but to spend time with the family that lived inside your home. I think God is saying it's time we got to get back to our first love. It's time for us to get back to Him because that's the only thing that is going to last for eternity is our salvation with Him. Mommy and daddies, listen. We are the ministers of our home. And if we don't teach our children how to worship and how to praise God and how to live for Him, then they're going to learn the ways of the world. I'd rather my children learn it from me than to learn it somewhere else. I want my children, my children's children, that's the song they were singing tonight. I want my children, my children's children, and my children's children's children until God comes back to be right here in these altars praising the Lord like we should be doing now. The Bible says on everything that has breath, praise you the Lord, praise the Lord. And that's what we need to do tonight before our sister dismisses us in prayer. Let's give God one more praise. We got to thank him and worship him for all he's done. Look what he's done for our church alone. We were out in the parking lot twice. We came back in. We had homecoming. God has moved and moved and moved. And we got to get off that seat of do nothing. Our blessed assurance is our pastors, both our pastors say, and get about the Father's business. It's time we need to quit being pastor saints. This favorite singer saints, if, or this song saint, if they don't sing my song, I ain't going to church. And my pastor, our pastor's on vacation. Right now, we need to show him that we meet business for Mount Vale and come even though he is on vacation. Because you know what he's taught us? Both of our pastors have taught us. It is. No matter who's standing here, as long as they are preaching the word of God, we are to come and we are to support our church family. I thank God for that. Don't forget, we also have this black ring that they found in the youth room. If you know whose it is or whose it might be, please let us know so we can give it to the rightful owner. And this week, you have one week from today to invite people to our family thing on Sunday at 5 o'clock. We're having hot dogs and games and all they're asking us to bring is drinks for our family and dessert. So go invite somebody and bring somebody. If you bring the most people, you get a $50 gift card. Is that right? So let's go and let's show God that we love Him by helping others. Even if it's just a smile. Even if it's just, hi, how are you doing? That can mean a lot to somebody. Just like Brian said, being able to hug Sister Sharon today, that made his day. Let's do that because God is asking us to be the church. Quit playing games and be the church. Dear Lord, please bless this service. Please move it and please let the next service be back. way better than this. And the service... This service was super good, but make the next one even better. In the name of Jesus, amen.